Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching episode 11 of The Sopranos. Only episode 11. What did you think of the last two episodes? Great episodes as always. This season has been a lot from the very start and we're getting close to the end here. Um, we received so many comments and messages across like Everything. every platform yeah. that this episode is everyone's favorite or a lot of people's favorite. People definitely consider this one of the top episodes of all of Sopranos. We figured we would switch it up and give episode 11 all of the attention that it deserves. Yeah, so we can have a good discussion on just this episode. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea what to expect. I feel like The Sopranos always does a great job ending episodes in a weird place and then giving you story elements or situations you just were not expecting. Yeah. So there's really nothing like leading in. We're not like going off of a cliffhanger here. No. Or anything, so we have absolutely no idea what's in store for this. So I'm really excited to get into this episode because everyone's spoken so highly of it. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this as well as everything else we reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the episode. Showing up for a boat appointment. Tony's already here. Oh, that was cool. Mm -hmm. There's a phone on this boat. Hello? I is Tony there? Mm -hmm. Oh. This is Washington. I'm his son's school. I'm sorry to call you. My religious medal. I think it's on a Stuget. Oh. Who is on the boat with you? <laughs> I'll be sure and tell him. Two weeks, not even a kiss. Hello? Oh, she bought that? I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> that was Morocco. Two weeks? Oh, that's right. She was gone. It was an old girlfriend. She wasn't from the school. My God, she sounded so convincing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to piss me off, which was more about sparing you than my fucking feelings. Jeez. Oh. Merry Christmas. Dodged a bullet. Let's go with the satin finish. <laughs> it's gotta look good. You know that Ruski, Valerie? Well, they owe Sil five grand. Why did you go pick it up tomorrow? Why not Sil go? He's sick. He's got the flu. What'd that say? Dick. So now I'm responsible for her being with Jackie. If you hadn't been so mean to him, who knows? I don't know. That guy sucked. I find it very interesting that you're able to talk about this without rancor. Without rancor? They're not like yelling at each uh, other. Okay. It's the therapy. We're learning how to communicate. Wow, okay. Sure. <laughs> She's sick. I think so. With the flus going around. I said, uh, how about giving me some? Jackie, I'm sick. I'm only kidding. Unless you want to. <laughs> Jackie. I'm kidding. Kidding. It was a joke. Calm down. Wanna do some X? I'm already taking Nyco. So there's uh, really not much between these two other than drugs and sex. How about the Cuban Missile Crisis? That was real? I saw that movie. I thought it was bullshit. <laughs> we didn't wake it, did we? Or the other 30 people who live here. <laughs> Aren't they just supposed to drop off money? No, you're supposed to get money out of this guy. Oh. Put it down. You got some balls, my friend. Whoops. Oh. Cocksucker. You come to my house? What did you call me? Oh. <laughs> this guy's giant. <laughs> I can barely hold him down. Oh. What the fuck? What'd you do? Would I have a choice? Yes. <laughs> yeah, not break his remote. That's it for him. What are you fucking doctor now? What are we gonna do? Pull the camera. Oh my god. They just killed this dude? Polly, what the fuck? All he had to do was pick up money. And he had the money. I had no right to even answer your phone. It's all right. Sorry I lied. Can I open it? You fish it out of the ocean? No. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> the curtain? It's an outfit. No, I feel like a jerk. I got nothing for you. Of course you do. His penis? We saw that guy, but we had a problem. Freak sucker punched me. No, he did not. Where's the guy? With the luggage. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm supposed to meet, meet Slava later. What the fuck am I supposed to say to him? Nine o'clock, my house. You like London broil? It's getting very serious. Their relationship? Yeah. Got a Roy Rogers over there. You hungry? I didn't eat breakfast. Most important meal. You're lecturing him? Fuck that. I gotta eat something. We'll go to Morton's. Have a steak. 
so casual after just murdering a dude. You and Carmela seem to be going well. It's the therapy. Is it the therapy or the affair? I'm seeing somebody, a patient of yours. She's Italian. You stick to your own kind, you know. A West Side Story now? Well, maybe she reminds me of you. Oh, what? <laughs> How? Smart, sexy, just Italian. Those are his three categories. She makes me happy. Does she seem happy to you? Yeah, she can't really explain her condition. And Tony's literally just gonna think she's jealous anyways. Yeah. Being with Gloria makes me happier than all of your Prozac and your therapy bullshit combined. Until it goes bad. How are you a better husband? He buys her more jewelry. Or how far south this is. Yeah. What good is this car in the snow also? What do you think? I think we should have ate. <laughs> oh my god, he's still alive? Look at this. He chewed through the tape. <laughs> Fuck your fucking mother! I think this is a perfect opportunity to just not kill, not him? kill him. You're just walking him out to his death because you broke his remote? Don't you know better than to wear pajamas in the middle of winter? <laughs> I think he's fine. <laughs> you think we're digging a hole? Get to work. What? I know the ground's kind of hard, but give it some of that Siberian action. He's giving him a shovel? Do I suck it? Yeah. That <laughs> You gotta learn to shut the fuck up. You do the same. Oh! Dude, you should have taken the shovel with you. Yeah, I don't know why he ditched the shovel. Motherfucker! God, this is messy. What? Polly just shoot him? Yeah. <laughs> or did he just fall? Maybe he just fell. Oh, oh shit, you got him. What the fuck? Oh. I got him, didn't I? Yeah. This guy's unkillable. You see which way he went? It's gotta be close. If his head's probably hanging off. There's some blood over there. <laughs> now they have to be trackers. Where Trust is it? Stop. Friend? Is he in the trees? I don't see any more blood. Like the trail just ended. Well, there is blood. Yeah, he's up on the trees. He's gonna be home for dinner? Yeah. Man, now he needs to eat two dinners. Is there any way the package could survive? Don't! God damn it! <laughs> AJ. I got a meeting with Slava. I could be walking into a fucking bus saw. T, hello? Damn, they messed this up. Let's just go. Squad will lead him anyway. Where we park? Back there. I thought we kind of looped around. Are they gonna get lost? We just follow our own footprints. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. They royally screwed up. At least we know what direction we're headed. Yeah, but we're still fucking lost. We're not lost. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Tony's <laughs> like, are there guns anywhere? Say hello to Mr. Soprano. Yeah. One day she goes to Harvard in Massachusetts. Proud dad. Family. Nothing is more important. Oh, I didn't even notice a giant gun on the table. It's 200 here. Okay. Yeah, he's just cleaning money, right? Yeah. But still, I mean, he's done a lot for him. And then just to have his guy. Where's your friend? He gives you your, the money, yes? I don't know. I wasn't there. Hello. Let's make it clear. I was yeah. not there. I wasn't there. I'm here. She want him, ain't it? He was like brother to me. Oh, my God. In Chechnya, he saves my life. Oh. They just killed his essential brother. I would do anything for him. This is so bad. The guy you're looking for is some kind of ex-commando or some shit. Yeah. Killed 16 Chechen rebels single-handed. He was with the interior ministry. On you there? I fuck! Get better phones. Call me back! I'm sure they have the best of the <laughs> best. He killed 16 Czechoslovakians. Guy was an interior decorator. <laughs> His house looked like shit. <laughs> Oh my god. They're gonna freeze out here. Chris has a head injury and he's starving too. Come on, he's running. Are you gonna run out of ammo? What are you even shooting at? Are you serious? I lost my shoe. Oh. He's gonna lose his foot. My mother needs the car and I gotta move all the dumb shit out of here. God, Jackie sucks. And he's an idiot. The poo ass oblique. Come on, Meadow. Oh. 
Maybe we should eat some of these berries. Are you nuts? Shit like that could be poison. What the fuck's that? Was oh, that their it's car? Like a truck. I don't think that's their car. Just fucking gravel under the snow. At least he can still feel it. Jesus, that prick really brained me. My foot. <laughs> what happens if he's just in the back? I was kind of thinking that too. He's fucking dead. He's trained for this shit. It's like diehard shit. <laughs> They are so screwed. You know the weather report in Mexico? Chilly today, huh, tamale? It's an old joke, AJ. <laughs> Egon Cosmos said he made it up. He's a liar. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I haven't either. Could be him out there stalking us. <laughs> now they're being hunted. He's in his pajamas. It's the fucking Yukon out there. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck, there's some ketchups and shit. I mean, those are probably okay. They're eating freaking condiments. <laughs> Mix it with the relish. <laughs> Gourmet. Are you hungry? You want to eat? Who could eat after news like that? How's Tony gonna get out of here? Yeah, right. We found some old truck. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Come on, some advice. You know, sometimes you don't think before you act. Wow, Polly. I, I shut the punch. I you. Punch. We'll talk later. Holly, you used to be one of the good ones. Hi, I'm Bajam. I'm really sorry. I need to borrow your car. Sick Meadows going out? And she's not gonna take this well. Yeah, how late is it right now? Sorry, something came up. Dinner is fucking ruined. He's already eaten. Consider it prick. Said I was sorry. He has another life. Which you're very much aware of. He was supposed to be here three hours ago. So it's after midnight? Yeah, what's even open after midnight? <laughs> what are you doing? And he keeps having a cigarette in his mouth that he doesn't have a lighter. Fucking insult even give me the shit, you wrong. Talking to me like a child. You are a child. We're in a truck, right? There's got to be a road out. Give me your shoe. I can go get help. We should have stopped the Roy Rogers. And I should have <laughs> fucked the Elevens, but I didn't. I'm going to run out of battery. You're gonna piss him off, Paulie. We're gonna die out of here. Yeah. It's me. They can hear each other at least. We're parked about a mile in near some picnic tables. We all can't. Put my nephew on the phone. <laughs> what other cell are they picking up? All right, just stay calm. I gotta go. Oh, now you're gonna leave your low life. Take your fucking dinner. Oh. Threw a stake in his head. Are you seeing maybe why she's in therapy? Like I've never seen Tony so calm. I know he's cheating on me. Car inspection? It's bullshit. <laughs> he could have come up with a better excuse. Yeah, it's midnight. Hey. Man, everyone's up late. Oh, no, they woke him up. Did you call Bobby? He's on his way. You said Bobby? What have you been eating, steak? No. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like steak. I need to borrow a shirt. Oh, nice, Bobby. He's prepared. Don't laugh. It's crazy out there. <laughs> He's smarter than all of you. Aww. If you wake me in the middle of the night, I got to get my balls broken too. Poor Bobby. I got to change my shirt. Yeah, you're going to be freezing out there and then you're going to ask for Bobby's stuff. I got my limits too, Junior. Be strong. He's definitely there. Yeah. Oh, okay. This does it. Oh, I'm just tutoring her. Who the hell are you? Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> it's Tony Soprano's daughter. Oh, what do I care, asshole? I like her, uh, not roommate, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> hunting. With that and me used to go every year. And Bobby to the rescue? One time we went hunting, saw a sign said bear left, so we went home. <laughs> that took me a while. I thought he said bad. I know you had your problems, but I wish she was my uncle sometimes. Aw, I'm loving this Bobby time. They don't know how to like hotwire a car. I guess not. I mean, it could be super broken down, but I feel like they didn't even try. Yeah, to have maybe some gas to turn on the heater. What are those, Tic Tacs? <laughs> I don't know how to mom me. There ain't no more. I ate them. Selfish wow. prick, I'm dying here. He gave you ketchup. I'm eating those berries. I'm telling you, they're poison. Where's their car? Oh, shit. 
Did he take their car? He had to. Oh my god. So all they're gonna be able to do is save them, but this guy's long gone. Tony, I can't hear you. That Tony? Oh. What'd he say? I don't know. His phone died? I think so. You're just peeing right there? Go back to fucking sleep. Why? So you could choke me? I heard you on the phone trying to blame this on me. Oh. Choke you right now, you fuck. <laughs> You want you, cocksucker? Put it down, Chrissy. Oh, damn. You think I really kill you? Yeah, I do. I do, too. Yeah. I don't trust Polly for anything. I don't think Chris is going to kill him, but I would see Polly doing it to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Chris is, like, losing it, though. I'm not going to leave you. I mean, he has a freaking head injury. <laughs> What's the if they can't hear that, they're nowhere close. But wait till it's light, <laughs> then we'll head in. I mean, it's only a few hours. He was cheating on me. She was a real whore too. <laughs> it's horrible. They shouldn't have pressured him like that. Pressured him for what? Whatever, Matt, he was such a trap. No, he wasn't, he was great. You're just temperature high. Oh. Sun's out. A little makeshift shoe. First place I'm hitting is Denny's. Denny's. Motherfucker! Shooting his shoe? That's no deer hunter. Well. That helped. <laughs> Bobby's ready. Tommy! Over here! <laughs> it's not a plane. Thank fucking God. Jesus Christ, look at you two. Are they gonna realize that the car is gone? My fucking car's gone. Is the heat on? Are you putting this together? Oh, they got food. Probably kids or something. What if it was the guy? Yes. You got the money? It was in the car. Oh, they didn't even get the money. I know I fucked up, but it's okay, really. Just forget it. That's too calm. That's even scarier. Possible this fuck made it out of here alive? Headshot, I don't know. On the other hand, anything's possible. If the car is gone, I would say there's a good possibility that he took it. Yeah. You deal with Slava, you take the heat, you pay the price. Capiche? Fine. Yeah, the price might be death. Depends if that guy's dead. I doubt it. He had to have taken that car. Unless they see it, like, off in a ditch on their way home. Come mayonnaise on your chin. What? Mayonnaise. So quiet. Like the Grim Reapers out there in the woods for Polly. One minute she's fine, next minute she's a fucking lunatic. Yes. Why does everything gotta be so hard? And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I do the right thing by my family. Doesn't that count for anything? What? You cancel it out with quite a few things. Depressive personality, unstable, impossible to please. Your mom. Does that remind you of any other woman? <laughs> it's... All right, that was episode 11 of The Sopranos. What'd you think? That was a wild episode. Yes, I definitely loved it. Yeah, so did I. I can absolutely see why everyone loves that episode. It was very different than pretty much anything that we've seen so far. It was just like fun. It's hard to explain. I mean, there's so many Sopranos episodes, they're all great, but they, you know, are heavy on the conversations mm -hmm. or certain things are unfolding slowly over time. This was just like a wacky adventure with two of our characters in the woods. Yeah. So it definitely felt so different than any other episode, but it was a ton of fun. Yeah, and you know, not a ton happened. No. But a lot happened. <laughs> like everything that happened had such a large amount of weight to it. Yeah, I mean, the consequences of this episode are astronomical. For Even everything. For everything. I mean, for the relationship with uh, the girl and Tony. I mean, she could blow up and, I don't know, do something terrible. I mean, destroy any sort of happiness Tony has. Uh, Meadow with the fallout with Jackie, that's gonna be another huge situation that maybe uh, Tony confronts Jackie with. But I mean, the biggest obviously is there's a loose Russian commando. I mean, it's vague. Is he alive? Is he not? Was it kids who stole the car in the middle of the night? That seems highly unlikely. This is terrible. I mean, this could be the start of a Russian and Italian war. Oh, this is, it's so messy. Obviously throughout 
the entire series, we've seen the relationships that Tony has with multiple Russians. I mean, Irina was his girlfriend. Right. Um, then we had this back and forth between her roommate and Janice. Then obviously there's a great relationship between Tony and uh, Slava, I think is his I think name. so, yeah. There is a lot of different dynamics going on, but from what we saw with the whole Janice ordeal where you know they attacked her and tony ended up beating that guy right um for janice and they were willing to give tony his name yeah i mean the relationship seems very positive between the two if this guy is alive it is going to destroy everything but like tony said this is all on Polly. Mm -hmm. i still watch shows sometimes thinking that main characters are not vulnerable i guess but I really shouldn't because it is totally plausible that this could be the start of the end for Polly. I don't know if it's just this season. I think it really has been. We've seen a lot more of Polly, kind of like in a negative light. Yeah. It's funny because I think every time we say that, we've gotten a lot of comments that are like, what are you talking about? Polly's always been like this and everything. And I don't know if both of us had just like, no, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard because obviously, yes, they're all terrible people, terrible characters, but there's still something inside you that wants to like pick someone to yeah. root for. Right. And definitely in the first few seasons, I thought Paulie was great. I thought he was super trustworthy. I thought he always made smart decisions, gave great advice. He was a, definitely a, a top member for Tony. Mm -hmm. But this season, for sure, with the whole Adriana thing, yeah. with uh, the way that he treats Christopher, mm -hmm. this episode was obviously one of the worst in terms of just how pathetic Polly is. It feels like we're watching his downfall. Yeah. Um, throughout the season, obviously he didn't take well to the fact that Christopher was made and he's like going up the ranks so quickly. Christopher or Ralphie? Christopher, but oh, okay. also Ralphie. Okay. Um, Ralphie was already a made man prior to this, but the fact that he's now a captain Obviously, I forgot about that. There was a good amount of jealousy yeah. um, in that as well that came out in this episode. But it's just crazy. Like, he is such a hothead, but he doesn't want to take any responsibility for what he's done. And the fact that he was trying to blame Christopher to Tony, and it's just so funny because Tony has known Christopher since he was young. Right. Like, he knows Christopher, and he also knows Polly. You're not going to be able to put that shit past him. No. And it's always funny too, because earlier in the seasons, we always talked about how Christopher was like the hothead yes. who would always screw things up. Yeah. And here we are in a situation, all they have to do is pick up the money mm -hmm. and the money was there. Mm -hmm. Like it was there to pick up, there was no issues. And even when Polly starts escalating the situation, it's Christopher who's like, Polly, like chill, Polly, don't do that. Like it's Christopher who's trying to calm things down, but Polly just picks up like a glass and smashes his head and sets everything off. The whole thing. I mean, the fact too that Polly escalated the whole situation with the glass, but he's also the one that broke the remote first. Like, no, yeah, he started it for sure. Yeah, everything he did, he came in there just like poking the bear. I don't think that guy was like, he wasn't taking the bait. Yeah, he had some words for Polly, but he wasn't gonna do anything until Polly literally smacked him upside the head with that glass. Yeah, I mean, it is just so bad. I mean, you expect a captain to be able to just pick up some money and get home without causing a massive issue between two different families. Yeah, and the relationship is obviously very important to Tony, but the fact that when Tony goes into that office with the money and we see like how close these two Russian guys are. How close the two Russian guys are for sure, but also how afraid Tony was. Mm -hmm. Like Tony was checking corners and stuff and sitting down and kept checking his back and stuff. Like he was terrified that this was gonna be the end of him. So obviously he respects and fears this Russian family enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, those two are essentially brothers. Freaking mess. I am gonna say that guy's absolutely still alive and he took their car to get out of there. I would say that too in a lot of other shows, but Sopranos always surprises me in these ways that it'll just drop storylines. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't be shocked if we are just constantly on edge or for like two seasons, every once in a while, Polly would just kind of like see a tall person and kind of be scared a little bit. Right. It could be something like that, or maybe this guy is dead and we just never 
see anything and they just kind of write it up as him just partying too much or whatever. He was into drugs and alcohol, I think. Yeah, no, uh, Slava. I think Slava. Hopefully I'm not butchering that. He definitely was concerned for him. Seemed like he maybe was a little too far gone. They obviously still had like a working relationship though, as well as a friendship. So I don't know. You're totally right though. It could be something that we just never hear about again. I think this was a great episode too. When you're seeing like these crime families and obviously they're successful, they make a lot of money. You expect some sort of like intelligence or like ability to get away with things. But I think this episode was great in just showing like the reality is a lot of these people are just dumb people. Like they're just criminals who don't really know what they're doing. Obviously with Polly and Chris, they're trying to kill some commando and they give him a weapon and then take their eyes off of him for half a second and that's it. Yeah. Like they don't come prepared or even how like Tony is laughing at Bobby. He apologized, which that was great. That, that was, was a great nice moment. That was a great conversation, but I love Bobby. Yeah, me too. Uh, but even still, like he's laughing at Bobby's outfit and I'm like, he's the one who's prepared here. Tony can't read between the lines with like his new affair girl or something like that. Like they're all just very incapable of doing a lot of things. And I feel like that really hits hard with the ending of this episode with Tony being like, why does everything have to be so difficult? Like, why do we make simple things horrible? Or why do we constantly like screw ourselves? Like Jackie is in this amazing situation where Tony loved the guy pretty much. And he's with Tony's daughter, like she loved him. He has this perfect situation, yet he flunks out of school and cheats on Meadow. Yeah. Like he just can't, they just can't stop shooting themselves in the foot, all yeah. of them. I think obviously the other huge part of this, besides the Meadow and Jackie thing is Gloria and Tony. Oh, Gloria, that's her name, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that's oh, her yeah, name. Yeah. Tony finally came clean to Dr. Melfi, obviously, patient doctor confidentiality. She can't be like, whoa. She's crazy. <laughs> but she is very much trying to be like, okay, hold on here. Like, why? Why do you think this is happening? What are you getting? Like, she's trying and trying and trying. And honestly, like though, Tony is freaking delusional. The fact that he's like, I always do what's best for my family as you're literally talking about your mistress. And then saying that like your marriage has never been better while you're talking about your mistress. Like all of these things, I'm like, are you that delusional? They are, I think they all are. Yeah, it's crazy. This was a great episode to put everyone into perspective. Yeah. Like it's just bad all over the place. I mean, and it was a stressful episode too. As fun as it was, this could have been terrible. I mean, we could have lost Christopher and Polly in the woods. Maybe we lost one of them. It could be the start of this war. Yeah. This Gloria girl, she could show up. Like I wouldn't put a pastor just show up at Tony's house and just start trashing the place. Yeah, I have a feeling things are gonna escalate very quickly with Gloria. With Irina, like you know, she was very upset. You know, she would call and uh, Tony was getting like mad at her for calling. But I think she knew like where that line was still. Yeah. Um, she would push it, but I don't think that Gloria is gonna give two shits about the line. I don't, I don't line. think there is a line for Gloria. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I think they're out of that honeymoon phase at this point <laughs> of their relationship. And I think it got very serious very quickly. They both care about each other very much, but I don't think that she's like fully grasped that she is the mistress. Tony has a full life outside of you. And an incredibly stressful and like sporadic job that just can come up with problems at any point of the day. Yeah, I mean, Carmela is- She's used to it. Yeah, I was gonna say she's not great. Like she's not a great person, but she knows what she signed up for. And she's like, she puts up with it. If there's parts of it that she doesn't want to, then she talks to Tony about it or doesn't, or right. they go to therapy, <laughs> whatever it is. But they have their own way of dealing with it. And I don't think that Gloria is ready at all for this. No. And I think that this is gonna come to a head in a really terrible way. I would be shocked if any of the storylines from this episode are over, mm -hmm. um, but they all just are massive and in terms of the scale of destruction that they can bring. Yeah. But even with how just like crazy the episode was, it was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, that might be one of the hardest I laughed for Sopranos with the uh, like, He's an interior designer. He's like, 
his house looked like shit or whatever that was. Oh, they're so dumb. They're <laughs> so freaking dumb. Just watching those two struggle in the wilderness, it was excellent. I'm definitely happy that we dedicated a single episode for this episode. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I'm ready to get into the next episode yeah. because I want to see what comes of this, if anything. But that was a fantastic episode and I can absolutely see why this is a fan favorite. Oh, for sure. We have a lot more to watch, so it's way too early to pick a favorite, but I can see why this is up there for a lot of people. Oh yeah, no, this was excellent. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.